This video is sponsored by studywebdevelopment.com, which gives you whatever you need to start your own side hustle in becoming the ultimate freelancing developer. And this will include a 100 page guide on how to do your own side business, give you tips on SEO, and even give you website templates to help you keep going right away. Check them out in the link in the description below. And now, please enjoy the video. Alright guys, what's up YouTube? Welcome to my next video. I know, it's amazing, right? I'm posting consistently again. I am back. <laughs> what I want to talk about today is something that I really do believe is important for all developers, whether you're a spying developer or currently working as an engineer in the industry. I think this is something that all of us need to know because what I'm going to talk about can determine where your career can eventually end up. So what do I want to talk about? What I want to talk about right now are potentially five career ending mistakes that I've made as a developer. Bro. I'm making a video, man. Can you be quiet? Hold on, let me take off her freaking collar. One second. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is very important, which is pride. This is huge because this is something that I've been fighting not just for a couple days, weeks, or even months, but to be honest, years as a developer. Pride is something that you, yes, you should have as a developer. I mean, pride in what it is that you do, right? But when it comes to actual coding, it's just like the gym. Pride is something that you must make sure that you check at the door, you leave it there at the door. That when you come into the office, that pride must not exist whatsoever when it comes to problem solving, or when it comes to creating. And why? If, for example, when you go to the gym and if you do not check your pride at the door, what can potentially happen is that you can injure yourself severely. You can potentially break your back. Uh, you can kill yourself. You can make horrible mistakes because you're not willing to start off humbly and start off right when you're at the gym. You're just trying to look good at everyone else. But what good does that do for you? What good does that do for your growth when you're trying to like exercise? It's the exact same thing when it comes to coding. When you're a developer, whether you are not just at work in the office, even when you're studying code, this is something that you have to be able to check at the door because honestly, if you do not do that, you will really hinder yourself as a developer. Uh, because again, like I said, this is something that I didn't just face for months, weeks, or days. It was something I actually had to fight for years. And something that I was finally really able to put off when I joined this particular company, entrepreneur.com. Why is this very important? When I would receive a ticket, what would happen a lot of times is that even if I don't know the answer to something, I couldn't solve it, it would take me days to do something that could have been done in a couple minutes. Because why? I, I worked at a very small company, at my first company, and this is a larger company, much more fast pace, much more busy, many more tickets, and there are a lot more things I have to do here than my last one. And so there are a lot of new things that I wasn't accustomed to, not just the technologies, but also just the way things worked around this company and etc. And so um, because of that, because I wasn't willing to humble myself, I was not able to grow as fast or learn as much as I actually could have in the first place. And this is something that I'm 100% sure that many people face. Why? Because that is why there's something called imposter syndrome. It's like you're afraid that you're gonna get caught that you're not a real developer. But forget that, man. Let that go and just go in, humble yourself, and just do whatever it takes to really get the job done at work. All right, so that, let me bring, that brings me to my second topic. The second thing that has really hindered me and something that could have potentially really destroyed my career as a developer is that I wasn't willing, again, just to continue ask questions or ask for help. So number one, put your pride down when you go into office or when you're learning code. But even secondly, you have to be willing and be ready to ask as many questions as possible. I know there are some companies where senior developers or people above you hate it when you ask questions because you should know everything. In that case, and I'm sorry about that, <laughs> I, I, I am very aware of companies that are like that. But fortunately for me, where I'm at, questions are always welcome. And even though there's an open door policy in my company, even though questions were always welcome, again, because of my pride, I wasn't willing to ask for help. But I'm gonna tell you, like, I started doing this recently, like within the last couple of weeks, and the amount of things that I've actually learned, not just because I asked the questions, but asking a question shows that you wanna know. And because you wanna know, rather than people just telling you what happens, you tend to remember things even that much more better. 
and I'm able to grasp things that much more. And also, even with that too, it builds a relationship with your colleagues, with your boss. And that's what I noticed too, because now I'm not just talking to them about Apex Legends, because I love Apex Legends, hit me up on Twitch. Uh, but I'm able to just like converse with my colleagues and just build a relationship even that much more and at first, you know, I was scared to ask questions, but now like I'll message them and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna ask you a lot of questions right now. Please forgive me. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next topic right now. The third mistake that developers make, which is honestly also why I took a two month break from YouTube, is because I honestly feel like I got too comfortable. And that is a scary position to be in as a developer, being too comfortable with where you're at. Why is this dangerous? It, it, it applies to everything. For example, let's say you're a basketball player and you're just playing as you normally are. You're not willing to try new things. You're not willing to you know, maybe look up YouTube videos to see what actual NBA players do that make them stand out from the rest of the world because like only what maybe less than 1% of the world are actual NBA players in this league, right? But the same thing applies to developers as well. When you get too comfortable, you stop trying to learn more. You stop trying to get better. And this is dangerous, why? Because if you're an aspiring developer or you already work in this field, we're working and making a living in industry that is moving a very, very fast pace where technologies are always moving. And what can potentially happen is that, let's say you get laid off, right? And I've seen people get laid off and I know friends at other companies who got laid off, but they also got new jobs actually weeks after they got laid off because they did not remain comfortable. They were always learning, right? But let's say this does happen to you. Right? I know people who aren't trying to learn new languages or not even just new languages, aren't trying to improve as an engineer, um, at least in problem solving skills, right? And they've been unable to get a new job and it's been months. I know people who got comfortable in college. I have a relative who graduated with a CS degree and he's unable to get a job. Why? Because he was just comfortable just doing what the teachers told him. He was not w learning new languages outside of school. He wasn't learning, he learned software engineering, but he didn't learn web development at all. He wasn't really simulating his brain or building problem solving skills or even let's for example like even improving his um i'm just getting better at talking his charisma right that's very dangerous to a developer now something that was actually happening to me and so that is why i took a two-month break so i could just really focus to be honest and i can tell you this after these two months i'm, I'm performing much better um, especially with talks about boss too this has helped me a lot I, if you haven't noticed all these things actually do connect right so let me go to the next topic now um, another mistake that i made was not making a conscious effort to improve and this is huge as a developer. When you become someone who is consciously trying to improve, whether you're learning at home or at work, what tends to happen is that you actually have more interest in what you're doing. And because you have more interest in what you're doing, you tend to retain more of what you're actually creating or whatever the problem you're solving to the point that if you were to encounter that problem again in the future, you can fix it. Let's for example, say you go to an interview in the future because you were very interested in improving in a particular situation or technology or whatever, when you actually interview for another company, well, what happens is that you'll be able to explain that even that much more thoroughly compared to someone who's just casually working, like a casual basketball player. But if you become someone who's not just casual, because you're trying to be more competitive with yourself and become better than a casual developer, without realizing it, you're improving as a developer daily to the point, let's say in a year or two, you will drastically become much more better than a developer who's just still here. And that's the difference between someone who can't get a new job and someone who can. And when you really connect all of these different things, these four things, these four topics that I spoke about, what will that end result in? What will happen is that you will now have confidence. Working at my company for, I guess two years now, if not more, one thing that I have always lacked was confidence. This is something that I spoke with my colleagues as well. And this is something that many, if not every developer has, or at least many, not my boss. My boss is just, pff, he's insane. <laughs> it's not fair. But um, there's a difference between pride and confidence. Pride is just, you're being egotistical. It's something that's not necessarily needed when it comes to developing, but confidence is. For example, when I talk to my colleagues or, my, or even my boss, a lot of the times, there's been many conversations where my boss has actually told me, Chris, you know, I've seen your YouTube videos, you're very confident when you talk about code, but when you come to office, like it's the exact opposite because I lack confidence. And, and one thing that he would tell me and try to, you know, ingrain in me, and even with my colleagues too, which is pretty nice of them, was to let me know that Chris, you're better than you realize. And I think that's something that we all have to remember is that we are better than we realize. Why? Because if you're watching this video, you are making a conscious effort to get better. And what does that do? That makes you better than the casual person, the casual person studying, the casual developer, the casual aspiring developer. How can you fix this confidence problem without even realizing it? It's by doing the opposite of these first four things. Checking out practice door, right? Asking a lot of questions, 
being uncomfortable and making conscious efforts to improve, what has that resulted in me having more confidence? I still lack confidence for sure. There's a lot I need to improve on and I hate how much I feel like I suck right now, but I am much more confident now because I do these things. Confidence is huge, man. Confidence is attractive and that's what you want. You want to be an attractive developer. If you don't have the looks, I don't have the looks, man. But if you don't have the looks, at least have, at least be attractive in one way, which is through your confidence, right? <laughs> it's huge. It, the same thing applies to everything, man. Even in basketball. I love basketball. That's, that's why I bring it up. But yeah, I mean, I'm sharing all of these things because these are things that I faced. By doing the opposite of these five steps, it has helped me improve in many different ways. So I hope that this can help you guys out. And if you haven't learned code, if you're just wondering, if you're just aspiring, man, you want to become a better developer, I mean, you can check out Treehouse. That's the place that helped me become a dev in months. But it took me years to get to where I am as well. <laughs> Alright guys, it's Krishan. This is a life of a developer. And I'm out. Peace.